Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining me for this video. My throat's a little funny today, so if I start kind of cracking in and out, I'm really sorry. But anyway, today's video is kind of my favorite stuff for fall and kind of like my flavor of makeup for fall and everything. So um, I'm going to hop right in because I've got quite a few products here to talk about. So anyway, first things first, I'm going to start with face products. Um, I think having a really good face primer is pretty much essential for all year, but especially for fall because in the fall, people's skin textures typically get a little drier. And even mine, as oily as it is, I do get a little drier in the winter. So that means you've got little flakes on your skin and everything. So first of all, be sure to moisturize your face. You can use, you can get away with thicker moisturizers in the fall and in the winter. But um, a face primer is really good for just laying the foundation for your foundation. <laughs> And it smooths the skin. It helps your foundation apply a lot smoother, a lot more natural. It doesn't get into lines, and it doesn't um, it doesn't kind of catch on dry patches on your skin because that looks, you know, just awesome. But yeah, that's my first tip: is using a good face primer. And I've really fallen in love with this Benefit Professional face primer. It's really silky. It's not a clear primer. It's a colored primer, but it's not going to, you know, change the color of your face or do anything like that. You know, it just, um, I don't know, but it's really good. It's really silky and it doesn't make my face oily, which is a two thumbs up thing for me. So yeah, this is a really good face primer. I'm really impressed with it. The next thing that I want to talk about is foundation and I have talked about foundations a lot on this channel. Just in the time I've been here I've talked about foundations so much because to me that is the most important part of your makeup routine is your foundation because it is the base for everything. You know it can make or break your look honestly. And my favorite one right now is the Perfection Lumiere from Chanel. Um, even though it says Lumiere, I haven't noticed a shimmery quality to it. So I think it is a really good matte but natural kind of a finish foundation. And it lasts a good amount of time. I wouldn't say it lasts as long as the Estee Lauder Double Wear or anything like that not the Matte Velvet Plus from Makeup Forever, but this one is a really good contender. I love the smell of it. It's uh, got kind of a different texture being as kind of long wearing and as full coverage as it is. It's really, really thin feeling. So yeah, I really love this foundation a lot and I actually have a review over this foundation. I'll try to remember to link it down below. I believe I do. Anyway. The next thing is a really good thick concealer. Now since it is getting fall and winter you don't have to worry about humidity or you know your makeup sweating off so you can get away with wearing a little bit thicker products. So I think that this Benefit Erase Paste is an excellent choice for under your eyes because not only do I have really oily skin but I have really horrible under eye circles and in my last video I talked about using kind of an outlandish product under your eyes but it really works. So I'll try to remember to link that down below as well but putting this over the orange lipstick like I showed it just it cancels out the orangeness first of all. The orange helps neutralize the color, but the concealer actually covers and brightens it up. So, and it brings it to looking like normal skin should. So, I think this concealer is excellent. A little goes a long way. I've had this for quite some time now. I still have a ton of product left, and I just think it's well worth its price. 
The next thing that I want to talk about is a really good matte powder. And this is the powder I've been using lately. It is the Maybelline Dream Matte Powder. Being as it is a drugstore product, you can save a little money on it. And I think it works almost as good as the Matte Mineralized Skin Finish Natural. It doesn't feel chalky. It feels really smooth. But it just doesn't look quite as natural as the MAC does. But I have been using this non-stop, so I must like it anyway. But um, yeah, for a good value product, I've been using this. And I think matte powders are pretty much essential for fall because to me, you don't want to use a whole lot of shimmery products in the fall. You don't really want um, super super glowy skin in the fall because it is uh, yeah in the fall <laughs> um, I was thinking I'd said summer anyway yeah apparently this sickness has gone to my brain as well but anyway um, so yeah matte powder pretty much essential for me year-round but I think more so in the fall and that kind of goes hand in hand with bronzer as well because we do tend to get a little paler in the fall. Um, but you still want to add a little color to your face. You don't want to look ghostly. You don't want to look washed out. So using a bronzer is a really good way to warm up your skin. But like I said, use a more matte bronzer instead of a shimmery one because you don't want to look super, super shimmery and glowy in the summer. In the fall. In the fall <laughs> but anyway this is my favorite bronzer and it has been my favorite bronzer for a long time and once again I've used this pretty much every time I've applied my makeup and I still have a ton of product left it is the Too Faced chocolate Soleil bronzer um, this is a pretty dark brown bronzer I mean you can kind of tell compared to my skin it is quite a bit darker but it's got a really natural brown look to it. It's not too orange, so it's not going to make your face look just fake tan, and it's not going to make your face look muddy. If you apply it the right way, and if you have skin tone that is as light as mine, if you apply it sparingly, it's not going to look fake. It's just going to look like you've given your skin just really nice depth, and it warms your skin up a lot too so yeah love this bronzer however getting into you know all the matte stuff and everything I do want to add a little bit of shimmer and a little lightness to my face so I do still use the same highlighter I used in the summer this is the NARS Copacabana uh, multiple and it's just a really nice kind of a pearl look it's got a pink undertone to it, so it looks really great for people with fair skin with pink undertones. It just creates the most beautiful shimmer, and it's not overly, overly light. It just creates a nice shimmer, so I usually apply it to the tops of my cheekbones, down the bridge of my nose, on the cupid's bow, and on my chin. Anywhere where the light would catch first. That's where I use it, so yeah. And then for blush, I tend to kind of stray away from my light pinks, from my nude kind of looking blushes, and I opt for darker colors. These two, I could not choose between these two because they're both just absolutely gorgeous and so appropriate for fall. But this one is actually my absolute favorite. This is NARS Sin, and it's the most beautiful dusty plum color. It's a, I guess you'd consider it a berry, but to me this is more of a plum color, and it's got a gold shimmer to it. It looks absolutely gorgeous on the skin, and I think any skin tone could use this blush, and it would just complement anyone. Um, and then the other color that I have is Outlaw, and this one actually came out this year. This is in their Fall 2012 collection, and this is a little intimidating in the pan, and it's a little intimidating, period, because it is so bright, so dark. But if you use it sparingly, darker skin tones would probably benefit from this a little bit more. But people with my skin tone can use this as well. You just have to really be careful with it. I tap my brush in there once and just kind of 
pat it on instead of actually brushing it on because it is so easy to use too much of this and not even mean to. But if you do, here's a little tip. You can use your beauty blender and just kind of tap it along and it'll help blend it out and lighten it up some. So yeah, this blush is beautiful. It's got a gold undertone to it as well. It's not overly, overly shimmery. It doesn't have flecks of glitter in it. It's just got a really nice shimmer to it. But it's kind of a pinkish red color. It's very unique color in my opinion but it's so gorgeous and it like I said this will complement any skin tone but medium to dark skin tones would probably work a little better for because you don't have to be so careful with it like you do with people with fair skin tones like myself all right getting into eyes now um in the summer, I don't really use a whole lot of super, super dark eyeshadows. I stray away from colors anyhow. I'm not really just much of a colored eyeshadow person. I never really have been. And if I do, it's going to be darker colors. But um, in the winter, I do like to get a little bit deeper neutrals and stuff like that. But I also like to use a really nice classic nude eye that I call it. Um, so, referencing some of my favorite colors from the Naked 2 palette, and then I'm going to talk about another palette in a second. I really love this palette anyway, but there are some colors that are kind of stand out to me. Over here on this side are my more summer colors. Over on this side are my more winter colors, so I think this is a really great palette for year-round use. But, some of my favorite colors are Snake Bite, which is right there. It's a really nice bronzy color. Um, this one would be beautiful for like a night out or something, but it's just a really nice kind of, I think this is, this one and Chopper and Half Baked are the most golden colors out of this palette. Um, but anyway, Snake Bite is a really good bronze color. Then next to that is this beautiful taupe color called Suspect. And I think it's absolutely gorgeous too. This is good for day. These two mixed together, this one in the crease, this one just all over the lid. Beautiful day look, beautiful and simple. Um, then the next color next to that is Pistol. This one is like a topish gray color. Absolutely beautiful. And it's really beautiful mixed with Verve beside it. Verve is a good, for me, a highlight color to use when I'm using darker colors like these. This Verve shade is much better than these two for highlighting. Don't know why, but it is. Um, then YDK, I can use this shadow by itself and absolutely be fine. It's beautiful. Then this one is called Busted. Really great crease color or if you want to really amp it up, use it all over the lid and then use the black for your crease color and then kind of go over it, over the black with that one and you'll have a really nice depth created with that. The black color I think is absolutely essential for fall because you can use this as a base for other colors. So like I said just a second ago, you can use uh, Busted all over your lid then apply the black in the crease, then apply the busted over that, and you still have that nice deep darkness, but it's not black. It's more of the brown color. So, I also use the black to set my eyeliner and everything, so black for me is an absolute essential, especially a matte black. I'm so glad they put a matte black in this. But, yes, those are my favorite colors out of the Naked 2 palette. Then I also have fallen back in love with my Dior palette. I don't know why, but I didn't use it much in the summer, but I have been using the crap out of it since fall came around. And these colors are just absolutely gorgeous. I don't really use the pink much out of it um, because the pink is not that pigmented. It's crazy. You have all these beautiful colors here. Sorry, I'm holding it out of frame. You have all these beautiful colors here that are so deeply pigmented, but the one color that they have in there that is not is the pink. Tell me that's not crazy, but anyway. 
Um, but these three shades in particular, I use these just interchangeably. Usually I use the shimmery, uh, kind of a bronzy tan color all over the lid. Then I'll use the chocolate shade in my crease and along the lash line. Then I'll go over the crease with this color to just help it blend out a little better. Then I use the highlight color on the inner tear duct and underneath the brow. And this is just the smoothest eyeshadows I've ever used. I would even dare to say I think these eyeshadows are smoother than some out of the Naked 2 palette. They're crazy smooth and just beautiful colors. So I've really been using my Dior palette a lot. I'm really glad that I bought it because I've been using it a lot more lately and I know I will use it so much during the fall. So as for eyeshadows, that's kind of my picks for eyeshadows. But I was also talking about more of a classic, neutral, everyday eye. For me, I like to use a matte, flesh-toned eyeshadow all over everywhere. Maybe a slightly deeper color for the crease, just to give it that nice depth. And then just use eyeliner. And I think it's a really great classic eye for fall. I don't really wear that look much in the summer. I, in the summer, I typically use, you know, my shimmery shades and all that. But in the winter, I go a little bit more for matte looks. I think it looks absolutely beautiful in the winter when you have just a really nice, clean, natural face. Not a whole lot of shimmer but you use eyeliner. You can create a kitten eye effect, a winged liner, because yes, there is a difference. There is a wing, but the kitten's a lot smaller. <laughs> anyway, these are my two favorite picks for eyeliner. I've got a liquid pen one here, and then I've got a gel. I've found that I don't really like pencil eyeliners that much, and I'm not really crazy about the liquid, liquid eyeliners like these with the little inkwell in them. I just don't find that I have a whole lot of control like I do with the pen ones. So I do still like these. They're great for pigmentation and to create a nice thick super super black line but when I'm really trying to get precise I really like using the felt tip pens and this one is my absolute favorite it is the Stila Stay All Day waterproof liquid eyeliner and this is just the black one. But then in the waterline, I love using gel eyeliner. This has been a staple for me since I bought it. And this is the Estee Lauder Stay Onyx. That's the color, Stay Onyx. <laughs> Double wear, stay in place, all day gel eyeliner. So this is my waterline eyeliner and this one is my upper lash line winged liner eyeliner. So yeah. Those are kind of my staples for fall as well. And then I love using really, really volumizing mascaras in the fall and winter. I typically like going a little more natural in the summer, so I just like for my eyelashes to be, you know, just really nice and separated and just really super black. But in the fall, I really like to amp up the volume a lot, especially when I do more of a smoky um, eyeshadow effect because your eyelashes can kind of get lost in the mix there. But um, this one is really great for volume. This is the new L'Oreal Power Volume Collagen the waterproof kind. This is the blackest black color, right? Yeah, because they don't make, yeah, they don't make this one in carbon black. They may soon but I don't know but the brush is kind of strange but I actually really like this eye uh, mascara and it really does create a lot of volume and it also lengthens getting on to lips um, I really like using lipstick year-round anyway but I really especially stray, stray away from gloss and yes I did mean to say stray um, I don't use gloss much because I find that glosses are too shimmery most of the time. The only gloss I'll really use in the winter is my Bonnie Bell Lip Lights in Mocha Mousse. This has no shimmer to it. It's just a really nice creamy 
uh, lip gloss, but it matches my lips perfectly, but it gives them a little polish and a little shine. But I do like using lipsticks, and I typically, in my lipstick video I talked about, I don't really use shimmery lipsticks anyway. I usually use more of a creamy or a matte formula lipsticks. But today I love, I've used a lipstick that I didn't talk about that I love, and this is the Rimmel Lasting Finish by Kate Lipstick. This is the number one color. It's the red color, and it is so beautiful. I love it. And then a recent discovery on my part are these chubby lip pencils, and these are the Tarte ones. I really like the Tarte ones, and these are the three colors I have. These are actually matte finish lip stains, and I think that's great for the winter too, using a more matte lip because, like I said, I tend to stray away from overly shimmery and all that stuff in the winter time so matte lipsticks and matte lip stains now are an absolute staple for me especially during the fall and winter so was that enough to blow your mind <laughs> I hope not I'm sorry this video is so long but Anyway, thank you so much for watching. What are some of your fall staples? Um, what are some products that you will only use in the fall? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe up here, rate, comment, and like down here. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.